Hello, I've just had delivery of my Dometic, um, the Dometic Micro Hecky 280-280 roof light. Of course. Oh, that's so cute. It's so small. Oh, it gets even smaller. <laughs> All right, so in here we got the skylight itself, instruction manual, fit and kit, and then we got the internal blind, which I'm not sure on that texture. It looks like coffee's been spilt on it, but all right, we'll take it. And then this is, yes, this is the fly net. Oh, that's nice. I like that. Yeah, look, have a look at the color on that. Yeah, it's a bit weird, isn't it? Oh, the other side's mirrored though. That's, that's kind of useful. I like that. And then in this massive bubble wrap here is what I believe to be the fitting kit, which I had to buy separately from the skylight in order to fit my roof. Okay, so by this point in the project, I've already installed two max fans in the roof, as well as four windows to the outside of the van. And having read the instructions to this, it doesn't look any different. It's just a case of making a wooden frame to fit the underside of this, cutting a hole in the roof to the correct size, and then you just put it all together. Oh, and seal it properly. So, I mean, I'll go through each step, but if you've already done something like this before, it's pretty much the same. I started by machining the timber down to the required dimensions. If you're following along with this, don't be put off by this process. It's perfectly possible to go out and buy pre-dimensioned timber. I was just looking to try and use some offcuts for this. Okay, so I'm gonna try and cut off as many of these horrible knots and stuff as I can. We'll mark the length of this bottom one first. So I'm using these two side ones as sort of temporary guides. We get one end flush just down here. And then we know that on this side, if we mark the outside of that, little cross there to show which side we're removing. And we'll also number the corners. One and one, two, two, three, and four with the other one. Okay, so that's the bottom one marked off. We can use that to cut the top one to size as well. Now we need to mark the length of these side ones. So we'll use the bottom one again to make sure that the side is sitting flush up against it. Hold it in nice and tight, don't let it move. And we'll use one of the square-ended ones on the top here. And in this case, we're cutting it to the inside corner. Little mark there, across to show where we're removing. And then that can be copied across to the other side. And we'll do the same for the top and bottom ones. Get them flush on the ends, little mark where we're cutting to with a cross. The method I plan on using to join these corners is with a domino, which is a very high-end, expensive piece of equipment, which is essentially a glorious dowel joint. Now I cut about a millimeter over the line on both the short oh, on both the short and long components so I should have a little bit of tolerance here. See here to begin with. There you go. Tiny bit of wiggle room. Get this end in. Bit of wiggle room there. Now I can feel just a tiny bit of end grain sitting proud here so these will sit out ever so slightly and we'll get a tiny bit of sideways movement as well. Lovely. Now there's many ways of joining corners like this. The easiest one is probably pocket screws. I'd actually advise against screwing through the side of one of the frames and then into the end grain of the other because end grain joints for screws actually aren't that strong. So one of those pocket screw things that go in an angle alternatively, if you want to slightly over engineer it, I've done a whole series on various woodworking joints that would be perfect for this application. The easiest one being a corner halving joint, a more complex one would be something like a bridle joint, which is what I did with the Max fans. This one, I'm going to cheat, however, and do a dot domino. Okay, let's have a look. Gorgeous. Perfect. Okay, so if I just get the laser lined up with the door scene, you know, thereabouts, spin it round, I know that that's pretty much sitting vertical. Measure 600 mil on the floor. So we're at 600 millimeters on the floor. This is traveling up vertical roughly on there and then tracking all the way back. That should be where the inside of the wall is for the shower. Now I believe shower is going there. Then the skylight was gonna go in this one. I am gonna double check that though. Yeah, it's going in this one. Where, where's my Sharpie? God damn it. It's definitely going to be a bit of a squeeze in this shower, I reckon, but cool. All right, let's get this marked out. Okay, so I sort of want the roof flange to sit on top of this rib here, and the flange will overhang the hole by about 30 millimeters. So starting the cut there will give an overhang of the flange that will sit on top of the rib, and measure across 280. So that's where we're proposing it will go. Is there enough room then for this? Yes. I could give myself a bit more tolerance if I shift it more towards the wall though. Although having thought about it, if the hole starts there and then this becomes waste, if I wanna move it back towards the wall slightly, that means that the cutout is gonna start at the bottom of this rib. And if you imagine this on top, if I was to get a leak, water's gonna flow down the side of that rib and then it's gonna be straight into the hole. If I start the cutout about, you know, 
five, 10 millimeters to the side of that, it means I've got a flat spot here that I can seal with mastic strip. So actually maybe keeping the cut out here would be best. And then there should be just enough lip on the top to reach across and sit on the flat of this. As I did with the windows, I ended up creating a plywood template to mark this out so that I could easily experiment with the location, ensuring that it's nice and square when marked out. As you can see, I did a little bit of experimenting before landing on this. As I did with the two previous skylights, I started by drilling out each of the corners with a small drill bit, which would then be used to locate the pilot hole within the hole saw. Speaking of which, this hole saw is way better quality than what I used for the previous skylights. Oh my god, that drill bit is so much better. And as of recording this, I'm pretty far in the conversion by this point, and I've used it for all sorts throughout, and it's been a godsend. I'll put a link to it in the description below if you're interested. I then cut everything out with the jigsaw, filed the edges smooth, and then primed them with spray paint to make sure they were nice and protected. Right, I don't know how this is going to go. Trying to cut a mastic strip along its length, but we'll give it a go. Turns out my GoPro stopped recording at this point, but the reason I was cutting them along their length was to build up that section right next to the ridge where the skylight had been cut. Oh. Here, you beauty. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I was about to say, you beauty. I mean, the mastic's definitely helping it stick, but that is definitely the best fit I've achieved. So, um, I need to get this fixing kit in position first, but uh, actually, looks like it's overhanging where the inside of the wall is, so I'm gonna need to trim down this. Yeah, in fact, let's, uh, let's do it on this side so then we're not cutting through a joint. really it so i'm just um looking at this fixing kit i had to buy a kit that was specifically for 20 23 to 24 millimeter thick roofs now because of the mastic on it it's made the roof the roof a little bit thicker and so this fixing kit isn't working but it's only not working to the extent that the screws they provided are too short to reach this but there's like nothing special about these screws whatsoever other than they're a certain length. Like basically it's these metal prong things. They've got two small spikes on them, which I'm guessing embed themselves in the wooden frame. And then the screw comes up from underneath to pull down into this. And this is where the thickness of my roof is a bit too thick. But like, that's all there is. There's eight of those around the edge. All you need to do is just get a longer screw and that's gonna pull it down, surely. So whatever this screw length is here, I probably need an extra 10 millimeters or so. Let's go find one. That's literally all there is to the fixing kit. It's just these Metal prongs and a screw, which actually looks like it's just been ground down to fit this thickness. All right, so I've just found a longer screw. Let's see what we're able to do with this thing. Okay, I mean, it's pulling it down. It's a weird fixing system, but I'll take it. Now, I'm sure these fixings are fine, but honestly, I don't trust them all that much. Just doesn't feel as secure as the two Max fans I've installed. So in this little gap, I'm gonna try and get just a bit of Sikaflex as an extra adhesive. Of course, I'm gonna stick some on top as well. A tiny bead all the way around. Okay, you're only meant to tighten them to 1.5 Newton meters by the looks of it. So they're not there as such to pull it down, it's just there to kind of hold it in, which is unlike the Max fan because that certainly, certainly pulled them down. I think that works. Let's go up on the roof and get it sealed. Okay, so I'm just getting ready to seal around the outside of this thing, but the lid itself is a little bit um, restrictive. It's quite hard to get around the edges. And so if I just switch to my phone, you can probably see that this pin in the middle of the hinge looks removable. On the, I'll show you on this one, on the back side of it, there's like these two thingies here that you can pinch together. And then I'm pretty sure that will allow me to remove the pin. So for this, I've got these long nose pliers and I'm gonna use that to sort of reach in the back here and get them off. This ain't easy, is it? What happens if I undo the clips on the lid? That might give me better access. Okay, that gives me more access. So basically what's happening is you pinch this thing and then push it through, but then it gets to this point and then it opens up again. So then you've got to pinch it, gets to that point, pinch it, that point, pinch it, and then you can remove it. There is no way you're able to do that unless you remove the clips here that allows you to lift the lid up further. You can't get under there with any pliers to pinch it or anything like that. You've got to take off 
these and those are much the same as the other ones but just a bit hello just a little bit shorter they got this little split end on it that you just pinch together and then it comes out nice and easy then it's just a case of putting it all back together and just like that you've got your dometic mini micro hikey whatever it's called i'll see you in the next video